to Rolling Grimes, not just sports and entertainment show. I'm your host, Rolling Bubble Grimes, your chocolate tribe today. Back on the scene once again, as you know, RollingGrimesShow.com, also Black Entertainment online.com. Now I have a little bit of a deviation from the norm today. You're going to meet my guest who is in my mind a historian, an author, a gladiator, an incredible human being. I had the chance of working with him many many years ago on some projects in the orange country of Syracuse, New York. We'll get into the specifics of it a little later. However, I will give you this commercial for right now. He is the author of a few pieces of literary work. However, his most recent piece is called Black Nancy, and it is getting rave reviews from a number of different places, and I can't wait for him to share it with you in a few. Rolling Bubba Grimes, once again, will be back with my guest, Mr. Leonard Nelson, better known as Lenny Nelson, and I have some other nicknames for him, but I can't share it with you without killing you. We'll be back in a few minutes, and we'll get things started. Sit tight. promised my special guest and I've been corrected off camera it's really cool because while we're talking you're going to hear him call me by my nickname Bubba as somebody over there who's watching the show <laughs> affectionately says um, it's not Lenny Nelson anymore it's not Leonard Nelson it's Lynn Nelson and for those of you who can't remember Lynn Nelson Ox Nelson please do me a favor put your hands together for my guest Mr. Lynn Nelson So I'm going to do formalities for about 37 seconds and then we're going to get right back into who we are. Man, it's good to see you. Good to see you too, man. Look, man, uh, first off, uh, he and I played football together at Syracuse University. That's you. But before you came to Syracuse, you terrorized <laughs> Pennsylvania. <laughs> Tell us about your days in Philadelphia. Well, I uh, was born and raised in South Philadelphia, the best part of Philadelphia. Um, we have the best food, we have the best looking women, and we have the best police force that looks away, you know, when things go wrong. <laughs> but at, at any rate, <laughs> at any rate, yeah, I was born and raised in South Philadelphia uh, to Charming and Earl Nelson. Uh, my mother has um, been deceased for the past 11 years. Uh, God rest her soul, Mr. Mama. Um, but uh, I was raised, my father worked three jobs to send us to private school. Uh, people said he was crazy, and uh, sometimes we thought he was crazy too. North Catholic? No. Which one was St. John Newman. Gotcha. He was, at one time, was Southeast Catholic. Okay. And then it became Bishop, and then the Venerable, on the way to sainthood, St. John Newman. And uh, went there uh, for a year, still own most of the records, uh, if not all, of no St. John Newman. Um, and some uh, state records as well. And you played running back? All day long, all day strong. <laughs> and. Uh, Actually, recently, we, the, the entire 80, 83, dating myself a bit, but the 83 championship squad, 
uh, the last team for St. John Newman to do so was just honored by uh, being inducted into the Hall of Fame yeah, at our high school. And um, we actually, my wife and I went down about a month and a half ago and saw some guys I hadn't seen, man, in so many years. And it was just a good, it was a good night for all. Now, if you're talking to the folks of Philadelphia mm -hmm. and you're catching them up today, yes. tell them who you are today. Uh, well, who Lenny, Lenny, Lenny Nelson is today is a person that is trying to live uh, the last half of his life better than he lived his first. Uh, I've done a lot of cool things, done a lot of bad things, done a lot of crazy things. You know, it depends on who you ask. Right. But the bottom line is, uh, I believe that uh, Maya Angelou said it best, we are at, at 50 who we wish we were at 20. She said that? Yes, she did. Okay. Yes, she did. So, as you reach 50, yes. and you think back to when you were 20, yes. what are the specific differences of Lynn Nelson between 20 and 50? Now, obviously, that, that, you've trimmed down since then. Uh, well, yeah, but somewhat. <laughs> in, in, in every sense of the word. <laughs> in every sense of the word. Um, I've trimmed my foolishness down. I've trimmed my waistline down. And I've trimmed my bad phrase down. Um, but in all seriousness, uh, I believe that uh, the the Len of old was reactionary and much, much, uh, many times much to my detriment. Because, uh, you know, I was... I was no, I mean, no, you can't see... I'm having trouble buying that, as I told you when we were drinking some lemonade and some Blue Moon. I yeah. have trouble see the guy that you tell me that you are mm -hmm. or that you were. Mm -hmm. That's not the guy that I played ball with, that I took showers with. Well, let's with. Well, that's what, let's for, let's now, now, we, we had some crazy in this yeah. because you almost have to to be able to survive that environment. Yeah. But, man, I would share a foxhole with you any day. And, and, and I you. And I you. But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about, remember, I'm from South Philadelphia, so a lot of things mm -hmm. happen under the radar. Gotcha. You, you were operating here. I, I started from the bottom down here. You follow what I'm saying? Um, it's going to Syracuse was part of that transition. Going, going to Syracuse was part of that transition. See, at that time, I took I took my God given, given talents for granted. Do okay. you follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And uh, like, well, like I like refer to, refer to them as using my powers for not so much bad, but sometimes my mother used to say that you have to meet evil with a, with a different kind of evil sometimes. Mm -hmm. Not to say that I'm evil. But I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna smile and turn the other cheek. I'm gonna turn the other cheek, brother. You're deviant. Yeah, well, I don't know about deviant because it's a bad connotation now. Because deviant can mean many different things, and and most of them are not pleasant, as you know. But uh, yes, let's. But if, by deviant, you mean that uh, I'm the guy. Yeah, I'm cultural. Gonna, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna pull you to the side, and it's not gonna be pleasant. Where you pull a brother to the side, and you pray for him. I straight that from the I'm I'm gonna look, I'm gonna look, I'm gonna keep it real now. You took me down this road now. You wanna know, I'm gonna let it go. You know what I'm saying? All right, so now, so now, I will admit that my posture was to take a little different yeah, approach. Yeah, you were always a positive brother. Right. I was a positive right. brother too, right. but sometimes, I mean, sometimes, uh, you know, they say one thing, I'm mean, another. No, I'm there when they say something else, bro. You know what I'm talking about? My, my goal was to leave with something different and then follow up with a bazooka if I had to. Yeah, that's that's what it is. That's another one of my nicknames, bazooka. <laughs> so, sometimes, you know, di different, different parties call for different measures, <laughs> without a doubt. And quite frankly, in our relationship, uh, we went places and we did things and whatever the party called for, we were able to meet that challenge. Absolutely. We did things on campus that were phenomenal. Absolutely. The time that we were there. I call it being a social chameleon. Okay. And I could go down, I could go down to yeah. M Street, get right. down, boogie right. with it, and then go and wake up for breakfast at Tiffany's with the Obamas. Now, having said that, as we move to this next segment before we take a break, mm -hmm. you actually are living some of that out, some of that out right now with your writing, with your speaking, with your Correct. your projects. And it's going to take you from the White House to the outhouse because some of the material that you're covering mm -hmm. and some of the people that's going to be connecting with you, they're going to come from all over the place. That's very true. And as a result of who you are, you'll be able to interact with them one, from one happenstance to the next. And you'll be able to deal with them accordingly. However, we'll be back in a few minutes and we'll get into it in more detail. So tight, roll the bubble grimes with Lynn Nelson. We'll see you in a few minutes.
Entertainment Show. Back here with my good friend, Lynn Nelson. Your latest project, Black Nancy. As we were leaving a few seconds ago, we were talking about um, the differences in people and being able to communicate with folks from different genres, different places, different races. And <clears throat> this project that you're working on with Black Nancy was set at a time period where many of us, especially those who were of African descent, didn't have that opportunity to communicate with a lot of different folks, at least free. Tell us about her, about this project, and how it's relevant to where we are today. Okay, well, uh, Black Nancy, uh, uh, when I sat down to, to write her, um, she came out of what I believe to be necessity. And by that, I mean our people have really no sense of themselves. They're, um, they're, they think that, for the most part, I should say, um, uh, a great many of us think that our history started when we were brought to this country and nothing could be farther away from the truth. Uh, we were, you know, we were kings and queens, not all victims, and all of us did not go quietly into that good night to say that uh, that all of us laid down before it was just a blatant lie. And I, I choose to write about the ones who did not lay down, who did not to say that not taking take anything away from anyone who found themselves in that situation, because nobody knows what they would do. But I know with some of them that have did, and I think that they, their story is to be is just in, as important to tell as the ones who who were unable to escape. We'll say. Um, as far as uh, it, as far as it, it pertains to us today, I believe that there's an inner warrior like Black Nancy in all of us. Um, Black Nancy is, is a single mother. Black Nancy is uh, unwilling to <clears throat> leave her daughter in a situation that she cannot protect her in, even though slavery, as it was, as it was in, in the uh, in the early 18th century, um, was. Um, in its infant stages, if you will, in this country. So the antebellum South uh, slavery system had not been set up yet, uh, which was a very, which is the reason why I wrote about the story takes place in, the, in this time. Uh, like I said, the early uh, 18, uh, 1800, 1724, uh, from 17, 1724, like I said before. You know, it's interesting because as I'm listening to you, there are some parallels to the time period that Black Nancy lived in. And the time period we're in now. I'm having discussions with people all the time about how, especially African American males, end up lying down, end up taking uh, <clears throat> taking the uh, punk route, for lack like of a better way to describe it, because we're afraid of losing our job, or afraid of losing our home, job scared, leaving our or losing our woman, because you know. So we take a lot of stuff that we really ought not take, mm -hmm. but we do it for safety and security reasons, but even back in that day, you had some of the same thing going on. It's just manifested so different. Yeah. Well, I, I believe that um, that uh, it's necessary for us to, st to, uh, to speak about slavery in a different context uh, because everything uh, to do with the African American, I use that term as well loosely, yeah, right. um, because none of us have. We don't have. We don't have. We don't have. Try to go back to Africa right, and see right, what happens. Yeah, right. that at, right. at any rate. Right. Um, True. I think that we are the only uh, culture of people who are separated not only by uh, by religion, we have different religions, uh, no other culture other than African American culture has that. Uh, we have, we're separated by even something something as trivial as, as monetary, as, as monetary things, money, um, different, even, even different color of skin within our own race uh, discriminate against one another, which is craziness, but it's diabolical in its inception. Do you follow what I'm saying? This sure. all has to do with slavery. So in order for us to know where we're going as a people, we must know where we have come from. So I, I challenge... But folks don't want to go back to there. Why not? Because they feel ashamed of it in some way, like as if we had control over it. Uh, they look at it, I, this is just my opinion, and I'm, this is strictly, strictly my opinion. I believe that people don't want to talk about it because it's so painful. And so inherently embarrassing, embarrassing yes, it, 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 you know, in a, in a lot of ways. But I think in order to, to solve a problem, if you had a drug problem, what you do? You have to face that problem. If you have a problem with facing where we come from, you need to face that problem. Well, I mean, what I always hear is, well, that was dead and that's over. It's a different day. We don't need that. We don't need to teach that in school. We don't need to teach that in the home. You know what I say? We've overcome that. What's up? You know what I say to that? I say they're not building plantations anymore because they're called prisons now. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that's it. 
on that one. That's all I have to say about that. They're not building schools, they're building prisons. And who's who's the number one tenant in those in those hotels? I rest my case. Challenge that. Challenge that. It, statistically, any kind of way you want to look at it. So basically, the houses, warehouses, plantations of slavery move from those plantations down south, as an example, to now prison system all over the country and disenfranchisement, lack of employment opportunities, etc. Lack of sense of who we are. And, and that's by design. Yes. That's systemic. Yes. And the lack of who we are, or the lack of understanding of who we are, because I'll be honest with you, I sit, at, I sit in the room with 37 black folks, and I'm going to get 37 different opinions of who the heck we are. Mm -hmm. Now, if I sit in the room with 37 Jews, I'm not going to get 37. You know why? No. Because they learn about the history Tell every day. Us this. They, they learn about the history every day. At the dinner table. At the dinner table. At the grandmother's house. At the great great grandmother's house. Wait a minute. You know, wait, 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 wait. wait. They, they, they experienced the Holocaust. They're yeah. not running from that? Oh, no, no, no. They want, they want you to know about it because actually, last count, four million of them died. We don't even know how many of us died on the way. We don't even know. It's, it, it's, but they train their children about the Holocaust from day one. They're not running from it. They're not ashamed of it. And why, and why is that? Why is that? So it doesn't happen again. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Fail to learn from the past and it will repeat itself. So they get a sense of empowerment from learning about the history, not, exactly. not, not shame. Every culture, with the exception of the African American culture, knows where they come from. And by knows where they come from, I mean knows where they come from. They've been trained on Yes. Every day, all day. Every day, all day. Now, Black Nancy is one of your attempts to help us to connect with where we come from. Exactly. Give me some specific ways. Okay. Black Nancy, as I said before, uh, is a is a, a warrior princess, uh, youngest child, only daughter of Chief Yoruba of the Ashanti Empire. Historical fact. Um, she's brought here uh, to to America as a fighting slave, not to pick any you know any uh, produce, uh, which was sugarcane at that time, and rice. Strictly because of her skills. Because she wasn't going to be a cotton picker. So. No, no, they weren't. Actually, cotton was not the crop. I'm just yeah. saying. Yeah. Too, you know, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm giving. The yeah, I follow what you're saying. I follow what you're saying. No, she was there. She was here specifically because of her fighting skill. Um, there was a secret society uh, known as, the, as, as the, uh, the Golden Knights and uh, made up of some of the earliest plantation owners in, in the slave system in America. Um, secret in that the uh, slave. Slave, slave as we know it today, like in you know, the Civil War type of thing, had not existed yet. They were they were just getting around to uh, shipping in you know Africans because they were stronger. They they could they could uh, they were more uh, resistant to the diseases from the from, you know, from the Europeans, which is why the Native American Native natives of all, of all um, walks of life and in the world were dying because they they, were, they had never been exposed to these type this type of bacteria and germs. So they were wiped out, decimated. So when they, uh, so that they caused the, the plantation was they had a problem. It comes out of dollars and cents. Because they're losing, they're losing their commodity. Exactly. So you had to find a, a race of people that was more resilient. And another, another thing, a government that would be willing to sell their own people into slavery. So we're not without blame in this thing. It's not just, you know, it's not like, you know, uh, let's blame the white man for this, that, and the other thing. It's, it, what happens now, we, the number one. We're still doing it. We're still slave. It, it, we're, we're still, still slave in our mind. We're, but we're also still selling we're, each other. All we do is buy. We don't. We don't. We don't produce anything. But we know we're consumers. Yes. Ninety nine percent. Ninety nine. But we also are still selling ourselves. That's true. And selling, our, and selling each other to other folks. That's true. That's true. different ways, but we're still doing it. That's true. And uh, but 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 getting back to Black Nancy, what she wants more than anything is, is first and foremost safety for her child. But she was strong enough and uh, knowledgeable enough to know that she needed education, just like to the, the, the correlation to today. Without education, information is the weapon of, of now. There is no such thing as there's really no such thing as it's not about white or black or, or brown or yellow. It's about green and the and the in the the acquisition of, of monetary things, which is a, a slavery, a new kind of slavery as well. If you want to be in the system, you have to play the system's game. But we're here now. There's nothing we can really do about that, other than close ranks. There are more. There are more African American millionaires than there ever was. And why? Why are we still having to go in Hollywood dictate the types of movies our kids watch? The kind of programming you see on television. Well, we're still not manufacturing anything. Yeah, exactly. But then, whenever someone tries to do this, 
then you know we we find ways to shoot them down. You, you, you follow what I'm saying? Looking for no, ways, I'll watch looking for ways to fail, or looking for ways like you don't want to do anything, but when this person does something, then you, we will all want to want to hate on, on that person for attempting to shed light on something that needs well, to shed light. Before on. we take a break, why are we doing that? Um, slavery. It's called. It's, minute, it's called on. by design. Hold up. So I'm gonna play not devil's advocate. I'm gonna play yes. Count advocate. Mm -hmm. You're saying to me mm -hmm. that your perspective is even as. Black folks deal with each other today. Mm -hmm. That it is a result of slavery. Yes. Why? Because we we have wanted to assimilate. We wanted everything everything to do with what's good in this country is always is always correlated with with Caucasians. Oh, but you know what? We, right, can't, right, wait, I mean, we can't wait to get over Jesus, there. Jesus we can't wait to get over there. Jesus we we Jesus call it we mind. call it bushy. That's what we call it. I, I, I don't have anything wrong, I'll tell you anything wrong with being upperly mobile. That is not what I'm trying to say. But as soon as I'm I can proud, go spend my money with these folks and I will rock. Exactly, but I will I will pass twelve black establishments to take my behind to Tyson's Corner. I can't keep it no real than that. Because I've arrived. Exactly. We've arrived, but we left everybody back there. If I'm black Nancy's not leaving anybody back there. She's not she's not running because she's trying to escape. She's running because she's trying to breed sow the seeds of revolution, my brother. Do you follow what I'm saying? Because her, 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 her upbringing isn't one to, to run away from the enemy. It's to face him, look in his eyes, and go. All right, we'll be back in a few seconds. Rolling Bubba Grimes, Rolling Grimes. Not just sports entertainment show, like Nancy Lynn Nelson. Sit tight. Thanks. Entertainment show here with Lynn Nelson, author of Black Nancy. As we left the last segment, we were talking about the impact of slavery on African Americans even to this day. We're going to get a little deeper as we go. So sit tight. Look, man, <clears throat> um, you of all people know when I say the name Franklin Red. Rolling Rhymes. You of all people know the kind of contribution we tried to make when we were in school to the betterment of the campus and whole. But in making that campus better, that campus had to become more inclusive of us and where we were coming from and where we were going to. As you know, uh, we ran some dangerous ground back then, uh, which culminates into a program like this, as we were dealing with issues related to race, culture, economics, and so forth on Syracuse campus back in the 80s. One of the things that never left me was, even while playing college football, I felt like a slave to myself. And I'm, you know, I had, you and I both know we had a, a coach that, <clears throat> that, you know, was pretty cool to be around sometimes, he was fun, and um, he didn't make a lot of issue or point out black versus white, he didn't seem to have a lot of, matter of fact, he played the first black quarterback for Syracuse University, Dominic Fisher, the one I heard. But I felt like I was an outcast, that I was living in my own internal plantation while I was in school. And I'm not sure I've shaken those shackles even to this day. What was your experience? Uh, it was a summer experience. I mean, as you know, I had, uh, I had come off of uh, you know, the most traumatic experience of my entire life. Um, for the first time, that's why I know that uh, 
it's all by design. I've never experienced racism before. Um, you know, coming out of high school, I was one of the most highly recruited guys in my area. Well, um, well just to make a long story short, on the way home one day, or the day I found out that uh, what the day I was contacted by Notre Dame, which is where I wanted to go, you know, Catholic mm -hmm. schools, get I wanted to go to Notre Dame. And uh, they were one of the last schools to contact me. And on the day I was contacted, I, uh, I called my dad. My dad was ecstatic. And uh, he came out of school and gave me some, you know, some extra money and I was going to pick up my girlfriend. But anyway, we were accosted by, uh, let's just say, many Caucasian males <clears throat> because the, the school, her school was situated in an all-Italian neighborhood. And I remember going up to a police officer and saying that we were being followed. And he was like, well, have they said anything? And I said, well, no. He said, well, uh, have they approached you in any way? I said, well, no. He said, well, how do you know they're following you? I said, I'm from South Philadelphia, and I know I'm being followed. He said, well, when they do something to you, let me know. I wound up, uh, my girlfriend at the time wound up being knocked out, knocked unconscious, jaw broken. Um, my cousin had a knife at the time, but was afraid to use it, so I took the knife from him and proceeded to chase six of them down, attempting to protect myself and what was left of my friend. Um, Never before in trouble. This is, this is a true story now. <laughs> but the very cop that would not help us put a gun on my face and said, Nigger, blinking, you're dead. I, I wanted to be on six months behind it. Yeah, I remember that. <clears throat> yeah. And, uh, this was before you came to college? Yeah, before I came to Syracuse. The reason why I went to Syracuse is because prior to this incident happening, I had over 230 scholarship offers. When I, at the end of my six months, I had two. Yeah, three. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, when I say that uh, <clears throat> I speak from experience, I do, and uh, it's, uh, it still goes on. But I'm here, you know, and I don't give up, and uh, I hope my story inspires other people. You know, it's funny because uh, I, I knew, and uh, in, in Coach Mack, the Randy Essel, those kind of guys, Randy Essel, the head football coach at Merlin now, you, you know, to their credit, even during that time, uh, they really didn't turn their back on you. Uh, <clears throat> didn't stop recruiting you because you had a black mark on you. Yeah. And uh, as a matter of fact, I was your host. Yes. So you were the reason why I went to Syracuse. Yeah. So I turned down a lot of money to go to Syracuse. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> I turned down. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We'll talk about that. Uh, tell me about the undertaking money. Man. Well, uh, I visited. Uh, you don't have to say the school. Yeah, I visited the school. Let's just say it's in, uh, in the SEC. And uh, I was fresh out of the pokey. And uh, <laughs> they really didn't care about any of that stuff. And um, had it not been down south, Bob, <laughs> I might have gone. But. Uh, my father was a stickler for education, and he didn't want to go, go, wouldn't be going to a football factory, as he called it. He wanted me to go somewhere where I, you know, could get a decent education. Now, the thing that they had going for Syracuse over this, this other school um, was the fact that Jim Brown had gone there, and that Ernie Davis had gone there, and Floyd Little, and all these brothers in, you know, in the 60s. John Mackey. Yeah, John Mackey, you know, and I, I wanted to be a part of that tradition. And uh, you know, and when I came, when I remember our recruiting trip, and you took me to my first Syracuse party, I was hooked. <laughs> and you was talking about the mothership, you know. What I'm saying? <laughs> I said this fool crazy, but he's cool, you know what I mean? Because <laughs> it was a mothership in the film. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, y'all was twisted. You know, didn't understand the funk. I get that part, but you you said that you decided to go to Syracuse, partly because of me. What was that about? Man? Well. Uh, in the Youth Study Center, you can't, I didn't find anything in there that was remotely close to being human. Um, picture, if you will, a private school kid, sharp down, head to toe, double breasted, with my, with my St. John sharp. Newman sharp. patch, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, <laughs> displayed prominently on my chest as I am being led down the dirtiest, nastiest, smelliest hallway you have ever seen or even imagined in your life. And, uh, and people whistling at me like I was a woman, do you follow what I'm saying? So you, when faced with that reality, you can do one of two things. You can cry and you call for your mommy, which then you become a victim. Or two, become what it is that you most fear. 
which is I chose. And that's how you survive. B. Yeah. Actually, I wrote a, I wrote a book about that as well. It's called Diamond in the Rough. You know what I'm saying? And uh, it's all true. And then when you came out of there, and when I was when I, when I came out of there, I was angry. I was different. I wasn't the same. And every I believe in everyone's life, you're faced with with a, a fork in the road. And whatever fork you use, well, I'm just talking about, I'm talking about the first one. I'm talking about that first major one that that just just detours your life. You can go to the left or to the right. We don't know until we get a little further down that road where you know how it is how it is changed the uh, direction of your life. So you were a different person. Yeah. Oh yeah. I was. Yeah. I was meaner. I was. I was a nice kid when I went in there. When I came out, I was mean. You was jaded. Come on. I would take no take no gump from anyone. But that's not what I saw when you came up to see. Well, that's, I just saw what I wanted you to see, didn't you? Well, I'm just asking. No, I'm I mean, just telling so you. Had, <laughs> you had the ability. I mean, it's somewhere in you. Well, no, I was at that time. I was so young. I didn't. I didn't realize it for what it was. Gotcha. Do you follow what I'm saying? No one. You see, it's another thing. Right, right. It's another thing in our society. We don't, we don't talk about our problems. Right, right. We don't talk about our problems, brother. You know what I mean? You internalize, and you know, in, in the, our fathers, our fathers, fathers' generation is, you know, you don't, you don't talk about, you don't talk about those things. That's weak. Do you follow what I'm saying? So, who was I to talk to? Do you follow? You call home. It pops. They pop. You know, I got a problem. I think, I think they did something with my head. My head is not right. You know, well, you know what? It's an excuse. And he didn't know any better. That's not, that's, not, that's not a knock against my dad. My dad is a great that's just, like, that's just how we go. That's the way he did. That, that, he de he de they dealt with it. That generation dealt, deals with things by not dealing with them. So I don't, I don't, you know, that, that, that's in my rear view mirror. I don't, I don't see it as clear as I used to. So I do remember, you know, the crew trip. I do remember the laugh. I do remember the, the, the what, what was it about my relationship with you when you came up that made you say, I want to, it was it was the way it was the way you carried yourself. I mean, you were only a few years older than me, but you seemed so to you know you, you, you your, your stuff was together. You know what I'm saying? You were you were you you you, you had this agenda. You were about helping people. You were about uh, making the transition from high school to college, which is I mean, which is a heck of a transition. You made it easy. Do you, you follow what I'm saying? You you told me what to, what I could expect. You told me what you know, what not to do. Of course, you know I'm a kid. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna do that, but you know. Yeah. But for the most part, you gave me uh, the, I guess for lack of a better term, you gave me hope that I could possibly turn my life around. Do you feel what I'm saying? And uh, we succeed. Enough. Yeah, and I never met a, a, like a, a brother, you know, that positive. You know, because St. John Newman was, was 3% black. Me, my brother, and one other dude, I don't even know. Okay. So, you know, we didn't have, at the, at the, to, luckily, I had, you know, I was, we were in a minority. I, my mother and father were still, were still living in the mm -hmm. same household. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I thank God for that sometimes. But um, it, it was more, it was more, you were like, just my sounding board. You know, I felt I could come to you and, and tell you something, and you would give me a, a straight answer because there was no lying in you. Man, when you came to school there, did I continue that or did I switch up? No, you didn't switch up. No, you were always consistent. That's the reason why I'm here, because you're a consistent, brother. You know what I'm saying? And I got to, I can count on one hand how many how many deals are still in life. No, three fingers. No, all of us run into these forks, yes. including me. Yes. And those are some serious challenges on how to try to be consistent, like how to get back to whatever this thing is. And, and as I'm, you know, when I reconnected with you, I, I, it, it reminded me of some things that I don't get to see that often now because of the conversations we had, the, you know, the rides that we took, the mm -hmm. music that we listened to, and yeah. how we went about things. Um, everybody's got those kind of stories. This was a little bit different in one sense because, man, you went to jail yeah. for six months before you walked onto a major Division One campus. I, you know, our athletic director, our our chancellor, today you would not be able to go no. to any school like no. that because social media and all of the flack that we're getting now would just kill them mm -hmm. completely. You know, quite quite honestly though, had that happened to me, it might have been better for me. If I had to go to a Division two school, possibly. Do you follow what I'm saying? In terms of football? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's the only thing I ever wanted to do. The only thing I had ever loved before to do. To because do. Division one football will kill the football player. Will kill the football player. Kill you. Dead. No. Make sure you understand that. Division one football <laughs> will destroy 
<laughs> Many people's ability to play football. But it, but it will also enhance enhance your. Confidence. I mean, you pick up other things. Well, you're lucky. Sometimes you <laughs> but, pick up and leave. But, <laughs> but yeah, it it, it it will. You know, I, I remember a, a good friend of mine, uh, uh, Dirk Carter, who played at the Mather High School and went on to Virginia Tech. And he's been an athletic director in some some places since then. Um, he spoke of a guy named Mike Johnson who played 15 years, I think, in the NFL. Mm -hmm. And Derek said, man, Mike Johnson's the only guy I ever knew who actually got better in college. Hmm. He actually used those words. Yeah. And I remember, man, I got worse. I mean, I know guys who still, you know, their, their statistics are there, mm -hmm. but they didn't look the same. Man. Yeah. There's something about that game, at the, it's some, it does something to you mentally. Yeah. You know, it, it, you know it's, it's funny. I, I, had a con I don't know. I had a conversation with, with someone about how the best talent is never seen. No. So to me, Harold Gaiden was Harold Gaiden was one of the best running backs I ever saw in my life. And nobody knows who he is. Nobody knows who he is. The legend of Sleepy Hollow. My oh, man. But uh, you just you just jogged my memory, and I was right. I was thinking of that. But I mean, it, it, you it, have it, to do. He was in the back. Well, the see, but there is there is I mean there is something to be said. I mean, the Division One football it just uh, bring us back to. You know the the issue of of uh, discrimination in in its form as it is now. It's more overt. You, you know what I'm saying? More covert. Yeah, covert. Rather, I'm sorry. And um, it, it it it's like which it, makes it in some ways more insidious and more diabolical. Exa exactly. I'd almost rather you punch my face and call me a nigga mm -hmm. than I should treat me like I'd have that. actually I just had that situation. I'd have more respect for you if you did that. I actually know how to respond to. Well, I know how to respond to you anyway. But I'm just saying that. That that was the way it used to be. Then I knew where to go. Now I don't. I don't. It's hard for me to figure out where those hits are gonna come from because it is so. Good. Matter of fact, the other part is that I'm noticing that the systems are now, especially toward black men, are using the children and our women against us in ways that I've never seen that's before. Right. That's why. What is happening? With that's that? why. It's it's. Uh, and you know, this is a very very touchy subject for me because where does. Where does personal responsibility come in and government involvement stop? You follow what I'm saying? Like we can only blame, you know, blame the government for, for a certain amount of we have, we have to pick up our own, you know, pick take our own garbage, my girl just said. You follow what I'm saying? And, Show along. Exactly. Yeah. The bottom line is there's too, there are too many um, there are too many um, programs, there are too many uh, you know, people like yourself in the community, uh, leaders. Um, if you will, I don't call everybody black leaders because you see them on CNN. I mean, real leaders. Cool. I'm talking about people who are, you know what I mean, like everyday cats like yourself. You know, hitting the streets, doing what you can. Case in point, you know, you, you, you were counseling, you know, at, at your alma mater, which I'm sure is your dream job. Do you follow what I'm saying? Until you start telling them brothers the truth. How long that lasts? Really and you, you're a model citizen. So imagine, so in order for a brother like myself, you know what I mean? You survive. I, I'll survive it, you know, but they won't like it. Right. But that's just who I am. You know what I'm saying? I've never read, I've never run for a fight in my life. You know, physical or otherwise. And I'm not gonna, try, I'm not gonna choose to, I'm not gonna do it now. So the, the bottom line is I wanna train our young people how to fight. Not in the sense of the word of putting their hands on someone, but putting their mental hands on someone. Do you follow what I'm saying? Well, in order to do that, you have to be able to play chess. You have to be able to uh, distinguish and decipher information differently. Absolutely. You if you fight a fight a battle frontally, and that's and that's the difference between the Lynn Nelson you see now and the Lynn Nelson then. Gotcha. All right, folks. So this is going to be part one of a part two, three, four, five, six. I have a feeling, <laughs> and uh, he'll be coming back on our show as a co-host in the future. Thank you. Uh, Thank only, you only because he can bring it. <laughs> and folks, uh, for those of you who who didn't know some of this history, I'm going to recap a few things for you. You know, as we close. You know, the first thing is that. Um, Lynn and I played football together at Syracuse University at a time when Division I football was going through some major transitions. The new money was coming in uh, from the ESPNs and CBSs, etc. Uh, it became much more entertainment laden as opposed to just football, which obviously changed the way different programs made their decisions. But also uh, with that, uh, created opportunity for the guys like the Donovan McPherson, the Marvin Graves, ultimately the Donovan McNabbs, just out of Syracuse, 
along with these guys playing quarterbacks for years before, the opportunity would have never would have never um, arrived. But we also had battles then, and we still have battles now that relate to us as a people. And we don't run from it. We address it, confront it, and quite frankly, it sometimes makes us a little unpopular. In your Black Nancy book, um, and we'll get into it specifically more when we sit down and have some roundtable discussions. Mm -hmm. This person is a gladiator, gladiator and warrior, but she's a female. So she's like the alpha male, but she's a female. Dude, why not a male? What was it that made you decide to make her female? And that's why they call it the mother of civilization, brother, not the father. Uh, single mother. Every day can be, I mean, it's, just look around, watch the news. It's all the black. Uh, so it's a replicate, so today's a replication of what was. The ne black Nancy's, black Nancy's is, a, is a metaphor for what goes on now. She black does Nancy everything. It's a metaphor for what goes on yeah. now. She, 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 brings home, she brings home the bacon, fries up in the pan. So it's, it's the story back then, but it's not. Yes. It's the mothership. Yeah, it's the mothership connection, brother. You know what it is. You know what I'm All right, folks. <laughs> Signing off, all about the grounds, all the grounds, not just sports entertainment show. We'll see you soon. Good night. God bless. Who is Black Nancy? <laughs>